Hello everyone and welcome to your Glassnode Weekly Report for Week 6, 2022. Today we're looking at whether a Bitcoin bottom is in, and that can be either a local bottom, which means a shorter term event, or is it something a little bit more macro? And what we're going to be looking at is a few different angles from momentum all the way through to the quality of support that was provided in that 30-40k range. So Bitcoin has essentially pulled back over the last couple of weeks. It's been almost a three month long downtrend now, um, pulling back more than 50% from the all time highs set in November. And what we really came back to is that 30 to $40,000 range. And this has provided support on a number of instances through 2021 and now again in 2022. So there has been a lot of market activity in that zone. So what we're gonna be looking at today is trying to assess the drivers behind and the quality of this particular bounce. What was the support that's come in? And what are the different market mechanisms that's actually pushing the market higher from here. So the first one we're gonna look at is looking at the concept of a short squeeze. Have we seen this play out? We've talked about this for a couple of weeks. Is that really what's driving it? We're gonna look at things like Bitcoin's 30 day price performance, which is a bit of an oscillator showing just how much the current price action has been somewhat anomalous and, uh, and quite severe to the downside relative to history. We'll look at a number of fair value models that we can use to actually assess these Bitcoin bottoms and try and find those fundamental support levels. And then we're actually at the end of this session going to spend some time with the on-chain momentum using the market realized gradient oscillators, which is a set of metrics that I've covered only briefly before, but I want to go into a little bit more detail looking at these across the 14, the 28, and the 140-day range. So that would be uh, pretty exciting. Just before we get stuck into the analysis, please give us a subscribe and let us know that if you're enjoying this content, give us a thumbs up and show us what metrics you really want to hear more about. We're trying to build out more of this content to really show you how these tools are used and try to bring maximum value to you. So please do give us that subscription. It helps the channel quite a bit. Okay, so here we are in the week on chain six dashboard. We can see that we finally got a bounce off these lows. We traded down to about 33,000 and a half. Uh, over the, uh, the last couple of weeks as the lows. And we have since rallied at the time of recording, we're hovering just around 44,000. So a quite substantial recovery um, and nice to see some green candles after such an extended downtrend. Now we've talked about in previous videos, this concept of a top heavy market. Now, what do I mean by that? So this metric here is called the URPD or the UTXO Realized Price Distribution. For every coin in the Bitcoin UTXO set, we look at the price when it last moved, and this shows the distribution, kind of like a volume profile that you may have seen in technical analysis. If we look at every coin when it last moved, this is the distribution of prices that they were at. Now, as a bit of an anecdote, what we looked at previously in the April period, so when we had the sell-off in May and all of the top buyers in that March to April period last year, what we saw when we had that sell-off in May, June, and July, is a great number of coins that were up in a very similar range in this 50,000, 60,000 range were quite rapidly sold. So these large zones were redistributed to this lower price point down in that 30, 40,000 range. So what that's showing is that people who bought the top are spending their coins, likely sending a great deal of them to exchanges, we see lots of exchange inflows, and they were being purchased by somebody else. So by watching the change in these particular bars, what we're looking for is who is spending and also where is their demand coming in to absorb it. Now, unlike that, that April period where we had all of those top buyers redistributing their coins in May, June, July after a 50% correction, note how we've been in this for three months now, a similar scale correction, and we still have this top heavy market, which is where lots and lots of coins were last moved at much higher prices. Now, this is saying that perhaps they're waiting for exit liquidity and a bounce to actually exit their positions. The other side is perhaps there's more hodlers in the market. A lot of the retail and people who had came in just for the hype and the excitement got flushed out from May last year and essentially haven't returned. So there is a possibility that a lot of these coins are in fact owned by stronger hands, less likely to spend. And simultaneously, our zone down here in this 35,000 zone is much larger. We have seen demand absorption here. So this is something to pay attention to that we have seen demand step in. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the macro bottom is in, but it certainly shows that much the same as May, June, July last year, this current correction has again proven that people are willing to step in at that 30 to 40,000 range. It's been defended at this stage once again. So we'll have to sit, wait and see how that plays out. Now onto some of the mechanisms as to what actually drove this market higher. We've been speaking for a couple of weeks about the futures open interest. Remember, this is the number of contracts that equal long and short. And we've been talking about maybe there's a short squeeze potential on the horizon. 
And the logic behind that is that we had growing open interest um, at the same time as we had increasingly, not quite negative, but it's just gone negative funding rate. So we're seeing more and more open interest as price declines, which would have closed out longs. And we can see here in our long liquidation dominance that through this correction, this green zone is showing that longs were getting liquidated. They were getting their positions forced closed. So as price is coming down, there's fewer people who have stop losses because their stop losses have already been cleared by the market. So it started to say, well, maybe after three months, people are going to start getting a bit confident in going in on the short side. And note how we've started to see more of those shorts getting squeezed on this rally. So we are starting to see a little bit of it. But the question is, how significant is it? Is, is this short squeeze the only reason that we're trending higher? And to answer this question, we're actually going to jump across and look at this metric. This is in our workbench tool. It's in a preset called derivatives, futures, open interest, one day change. So what this metric is doing is it's looking at when do we get a significant change in that open interest? Now, when are we going to get a big change in one day? Normally during a deleveraging event when the market gets flushed out. And we can actually see this. Here's one in May where we had essentially a large 50% sell-off in a short period of time and lots and lots of contracts were open. So any of these marks down to the downside, you can see another one here. This was a short squeeze in July as we rallied off the bottom. There was a long squeeze up here as we pushed to this high in September, which then corrected down into this uh, September dip. And we saw another one here on the 4th of December. Now note how we haven't yet had the same impact. So ultimately the futures open interest hasn't been affected as much. So yes, we are seeing some shorts being squeezed, but it's actually likely not the driving factor here. So that's just an interesting takeaway that it's it could in fact still be there as present. But more than likely, what we're seeing is um, something else is coming in as well as shorts being squeezed. It's not the number one driving factor, unlike what we saw here in July. Now, maybe if price keeps trending higher, that will kick in. Or conversely, if a bunch of people start going too long and thinking that this is the dip, then it can actually squeeze in the other direction. So we'll just have to see how that plays out. So the other thing to note is that we have our entities net growth. These are on-chain metrics and the number of new entities. So remember, an entity is a cluster of addresses on chain with the same owner. So when we talk about new entities, we're basically seeing new people coming in. How many new folks or new uh, on-chain entities are entering the system, entering the network? And you can see the bull market quite clearly from the March 2020 sell-off all the way through to the February peak, which is where we had a maximum peak of new entities. And it really has declined ever since. And look at after May, very, very significant decline. Again, that speaks to what we we're talking about before. Most of the hype and people who just came for price really did leave the system during that period of time. Now, we've had somewhat of a recovery, which interestingly, as you would expect, follows price. And we are really, it's still kind of in this bear market doldrums. We haven't really gotten out of that phase yet. So that's another interesting side that the demand that's here kind of looks like the rally that pushes up impressively to all time highs. It still looks like it's only hodlers left in the market. Most of the new folks and people who are entering for the hype and the excitement are essentially not in the market at this point in time. So that's another interesting point. And when we look at the entity's net growth, this is the rate of change. How many on average are coming in per day? And we've got here a seven day moving average. You can see that we had somewhat of a spike. We've seen this increasing growth rate. More and more people are coming into the network as the market sells down. So that's starting to tell another interesting story that perhaps as Bitcoin corrects down to a lower price, more people are in fact starting to say, gee, I wish that I got into Bitcoin at 30 or 40,000. And then when price actually gets down there, perhaps this is telling us this spike, particularly this week, is telling us that perhaps that's actually what's going on. More people are saying at a lower price point, I become more interested. So that's another thing that we're just paying attention to. The overall number of entities is still quite low. So we're not quite out of that bear market phase yet. And that is something to just take in the back of your mind. But we are seeing more people becoming interested as price gets lower, which is just another interesting little takeaway from this. Now on the profitability side of things, we've got here the short term SOPA, spent output profit ratio. Now, higher values of this metric mean that those who have coins younger than five months or 155 days, when they're spending, they're realizing a profit. And that's also saying that somebody else has to come in with new capital to essentially buy those coins. So we're seeing profitability in trading markets, and that's generally a good sign. You can see that during the bull phase, this metric typically trades up and above a value of one. And when we get these retests down to a value of one or just below it, it normally correlates with the bottom of these bull market corrections. 
The reason it does this is that's Evero's cost basis. It means that people are essentially stopping their sell side as the market corrects. They're slowing their selling. They're not willing to capitulate and sell at a loss. Instead, they're actually stepping in at their cost basis and buying the dip. So that's typical bull market behavior. Now, what we saw over the course of the last three months, and it's similar to here in May, June, July, note how it's the exact opposite. Every time SOPA tested one from the underside, it was rejected and kicked back down. So on the whole, for a period of two and a half and now three months, all of the short-term holders who were spending were by and large realizing big losses. They were losing money on their trade. And the reason that it bounces off a value of one from the underside is the exact opposite. Rather than buying the dip at their cost basis where they see value, they're taking whatever exit liquidity they can and selling at their cost basis. They're trying to get their money back. So that's the psychological trick as to why we're seeing this bounce off one and continue to get rejected. Now note that at some point, this bear market period bounces up above into profitability, we get a return of conviction, and then we move back into a bull market type zone, where you're seeing that profitability, people are spending coins, they're realizing profit on those coins, and the market is able to push through it, which is showing market strength and demand. So as you can see this week, we've had our break up above one and we've come back for the retest. So really it's starting to look like we need to pay attention to this metric to see, do we actually manage to hold this level or does it just end up looking like one of these particular highs where it peaks above, but unfortunately then gets slammed back down. So really we have to see how the market plays out here, but we're seeing that first sign of profitability enter the market. And what we really wanna see is demand step in so that, that those profits can be realized and the market continues to push higher. Otherwise it can speak to pushing over into the other direction and trending down again. Now we're also gonna look at the Mayer multiple. We're moving into the fair value models now. So these are just some macro picture to try and understand, well, we've seen this little bottom get put in. Is there some reason for it? Is there some fundamental undervaluation? And we're gonna look at this across a couple of metrics just to really understand. And the Mayer multiple is actually a very simple and my, one of my personal favorite metrics. Um, it's not even an on-chain metric, uh, to, be, to be honest. It's, it's taking a ratio between price and the 200-day moving average. Now, what's interesting about the 200-day moving average is it's widely observed. Lots of people in lots of markets, all through technical analysis, both in traditional and in crypto, pay attention to the 200-day. And historically speaking, note how it trades above the orange line during a bull market and typically trades below it during a bear market. So it typically represents this macro bull bear oscillator. So when you take a ratio between the two, what we're looking at is how far is price extended away from this very, very commonly observed metric. And what it's showing is that when it's too far to the upside, as you can see in these large spikes above the red zone, it typically correlates with points where the market starts taking profits and we get a top. And you can see that it caught this uh, our top back here in, um, in February and then again in March. We saw that we hit it in 2019 and we hit it all through 2017 on the major corrections and the final push. Now, over the course of this week, you can note that we're at a very, very low level. As of yesterday, we were trading at a value of about 0 0.8, which is um, historically very, very limited times we've traded here. We were here in March 2020. We were here during the end of the 2018 bear and the 2019 bear. And you can see we, pretty much all of the final capitulation zones tend to trade below there, but it doesn't head down to that level very often, where it trades at a 20% discount to the 200-day. So the Mayer multiple is just one of these tools that kind of shows us where we are in that valuation cycle. And remember the 200 day moving average is also a moving target. So it will move the longer the price stays down or up. But overall, what we're seeing is that on a big picture scale, this is showing that Bitcoin was in one of these zones that historically it doesn't stick around there for very long, which increases the probability of some kind of a bounce from that point on. Now we've also looked at this metric, the realized to liveliness ratio the other day. Um, so I'll just briefly touch on it, but it's showing a very, very similar trend. So remember the realized price is the average price of every single coin that's moved on chain. And then the realized to liveliness ratio amplifies that when there's more hodling going on. It represents the hodler's fair value, which we have here in orange. And you can see that we came down and we tested this in July. We tested it back here in September in 2020. And you can see that we've actually traded down below it and then bounced above. So we're now back above the hodler fair value. And again, there's confluence here. 42,400 is where the current price is. The realized to liveliness is at 38,900. And the Mayer multiple at 0 
is around 38,200. So there's a bit of there's a bit of confluence between two fundamental levels of what we would otherwise consider to be fair value. So it does make sense that hodlers who are aware of market conditions would be stepping in to actually look at that and say, well, this is likely a value play. So some of these are starting to make sense when we look at this in a holistic context. Now, the last section we're going to look at is the market realized gradient oscillators. So you'll find these again in Workbench under our presets for market indicators. And we have a 14, a 28 and a 140 day. Now, I will just direct you to the description down here. It's quite detailed understanding what does it mean when this metric goes up, down, when it's positive, what are we really looking for? So to really explain what this metric does, it's about momentum. It's similar to the RSI in technical analysis. What we're looking for is does each rally have more momentum? And what we will see is higher values. Higher positive values means there's more momentum to the upside. So note here in the 2017 bull, with each peak of the, of the overall price charts, we were heading into this parabola, we were seeing more and more verticality. The market was getting more excited with every rally. This is a continuation style pattern. Now, over here in our 2020, 2021 bull, note how we had high highs in price, but we had lower highs across this metric. It's showing that with each high, we had less momentum. There was less emphasis. There were fewer people coming in and overall less momentum. And as a result, we actually then rolled over into our May, June, July sell-off. Now note during our current correction, we have lower lows on this metric. So our price is pulling down in lower lows, but we have higher, sorry, higher lows on the metric. So what this is telling us is that with every down sell, every time we trade lower to a lower low in price, there's less momentum alongside that. So it's actually showing that that downtrend was starting to weaken the further the price went. Now, the second observation is that when this metric trades above a value of zero, it indicates that there's a upside swing that's in, in play. Over the last 14 days, the overall market is directionally to the upside. Likewise, when we have these negative values, it shows that the market is directionally to the downside. Now, the 14 day is showing that on average, when this thing breaks above zero, it's showing that there's about a two, you can expect around two weeks worth of that direction. So in this instance, we've essentially had a rally off the bottom. This week, we've break, broken up above zero, and we can expect something on the order of a one to two week type swing to the upside. That's really what this metric is showing us in terms of the overall momentum that we're seeing. So we've now moved to the 28 day. Um, oscillator, which is a bit bigger. So the higher up in the time frame you go, the slower it is to react. But typically speaking, the more confident the signal is because it's got more time and there's a larger period that it's measuring over. And you can see we have the same divergence, a positive divergence during the bull market. We have a rolling over of this metric during the 2021, uh, the first half of 2021 in the bull. And you can see again, we have lower lows in price, but higher lows in the oscillator. And note that the 28 day is also in the process of breaking up above a value of zero, which again is saying that we now actually have two metrics, both on a 14 day and a 28 day basis, which may actually add weight that perhaps the upside swing or the momentum has some kind of duration in the order of maybe two weeks um, and perhaps even up to the course of a month. So it's showing that we have a bit of momentum to the upside, as well as having those fundamental valuation models that were saying that there was that Bitcoin was essentially oversold at least over the last thirteen over the last three months. Sorry. And finally, we have the one hundred and forty days. This is the very very long time frame. The one hundred and forty is selected um, as a result of being a, a multiple of the difficulty window. Um, and what we're, what we're seeing here is that this larger scale metric, note how we have the exact same rolling over. We have a rolling over of the metric as price made higher highs. Again, all three of these models were showing us that there was a dwindling amount of momentum as the bull market topped out. Now, conversely, look here in the May, June, July period where we had this declining price. But what we started to see is that momentum was actually flipping back to the upside and supported price the whole way higher. Now, the thing to pay attention to is we're actually below a value of zero on the 140 day. So the thing to pay attention here is this is actually telling us that the bear market is more or less in effect because 140 days is quite an extended period of time. It's much longer than our 28 day period. So what we're looking at here is the higher probability that we're still within that bear trend. 
Now, what we need to see, remember that 140 days is back here at the bottom of the dip in on the 21st of September at the time of recording. So 140 days, if we look at the gradient between these two points, if the market can in fact push higher over the coming days and coming weeks, this metric may well actually reverse back to the upside. Now, if we do get that sell side come in and the market trades lower, then it will more or less confirm that we actually have continuing momentum of this metric to the downside and show us that there still is that bear case that's overreaching the, uh, the overall part of the market. And the very last metric that we're going to look at is called the monthly returns, which again, you'll also find this in our workbench presets. Now, what the monthly returns metric looks at is over the last 30 days, how, how has Bitcoin's price performed? And as you can imagine, if you have a 30-day period and you have very, very strong price performance, what we can generally expect is that we're going to have some people who are going to take that profitability and spend their coins into it. Conversely, when we have these periods of very, very poor profitability, so down below this light blue line is minus 30% over the course of a month. And you can see that we hit it in March 2020. We hit it at the bottom of the, of the bear market in 2018. We hit it in the first major sell-offs after the blow-off top in 2017. So this is when the market was very, very volatile, still coming off that major high at 20,000. And we had it again here in the June-July sell-off where we essentially had a massive capitulation over the, the course of the last 30 days, very, very poor price performance. Now note how we came down, we didn't get quite as severe as these sell-offs but it's pretty close. It's down towards historical norms. And you can see that here we've actually had one and two retests, which shows that it's actually been down here in this very, very poor price performance for an extended period of time. It's starting to break higher. So it's showing that across a number of metrics, whether it's on-chain, whether it's something like the 200-day moving average in the Maya multiple, or whether it's monthly returns, all of these are really showing that we're at quite a very, very low valuation over the last couple of days. Couple that with a short squeeze and some new entities coming in on board, and it makes sense that there's a bit of a bounce to the upside. And what we really have to pay attention to is does it have the momentum to continue to rally from that point onwards? Is this a macro bottom or is this a local bottom? And this is something that we'll be paying attention to over coming weeks. So just to really summarize, we've really pulled off that, that short squeeze, that first phase of the short squeeze we've been talking about. The market has pulled higher. We've seen a number of metrics that indicated that strong support was there. And what we're looking for is that on-chain momentum to really push and continue on to the upside. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the content this week. Do give us a subscribe and a like and let us know if you're enjoying this content, what other kind of metrics and analysis you're enjoying. If there's any particular concepts or topics that you want us to cover, do feel free to let us know in the comments. We're reading all of them and we really appreciate it. So until the next one, I'll see you then. Cheers.